Good morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So let's read the call to worship together. You are all and I'll be one. And if you would like, if you choose to, you may stand. All, let us worship God with the awe of the young. Let us worship God with, with the wisdom of the old. Let us worship God with each one gathered. Let us worship God with each one far off. Let us worship God as one body. Let us worship God as one church in Christ. Now as you remain standing, please turn in the hymnal to page 134, Bring Your Many Names. seated. 
It's the time in our service where we give our tithes and offerings. And so um, as we, uh, you can give online by PayPal, or you can do it the old fashioned way, put it in the, um, uh, in the, the plate that's in the back, or you can do it the in between, not old fashioned, but kind of new. You can mail it in. <laughs> so, so this is a time to remember our tithes, talents, and offerings. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for these gifts this morning. These gifts that are, are made to build up your kingdom. These gifts that are made to honor you. These gifts that are made to do the work that our children need, that our world needs, that our neighborhood needs. God bless these gifts these tithes, and also our time and talent. In the name of the one who is our liberator, our redeemer, our savior and friend, Jesus ben Miriam, it's in his name, Ashe and Amen. This morning's scripture reading will come from the Hebrew Bible as well as the New Testament. From the Hebrew Bible, we are reading um, Isaiah 6 verses, uh, Isaiah 11 verses 6 through 9, and you will find it on page 558 in your Pew Bible. I will read from the contemporary English version. I'll give you time to find it in your Bible if you want to. But anyway. Isaiah 11, verses 6 through 9. Leopards will lie down with young goats, and wolves will rest with lambs. Calves and lions will eat together and be cared for by little children. Cows and bears will share the same pasture. Their young will rest side by side. Lions and oxen with bo will both eat straw. Little children will play near snake holes. They will stick their hands into dens of poisonous snakes and never be hurt. Nothing harmful will take place on the Lord's holy mountain. Just as water fills the sea, the land will be filled with people who know and honor the Lord. 
Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. You will find it in your pew Bible on page 853. And I will be reading from First Nations Version and Indigenous Translation of the New Testament. The people were bringing their little children to Creator sets free. Down and so he would lay his hands on them and bless them. But his followers spoke harsh words to the ones bringing them. So Creator sets free, Jesus, said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not turn them away. Creator's good road belongs to the ones who are like these children. I speak from my heart unless you welcome Creator's good, good road in the way a little child does. You will never walk it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will the children come join me, please? It is an honor and a privilege to be before you this morning as your interim associate pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. When I think of the last few years, there have been quite a few changes in who has been standing here. For many years, we had Tom and Lois. Then for a while, we had Eric Buller and Luann Yutzi. Then Pastor Christina, who we fortunately still have, and Scott Litwiller, then Don Yoder Harms, and now you're stuck with me. <laughs> but it is good, and I thank you. This morning, I want to simply take a look at our congregational intentions. We gathered in the fellowship hall some time ago to discern what we wanted to do and what was mattered to us as we looked for leadership and I want to walk through simply some of the things we said. We said in intention three, we will support discipleship for all, and especially the participation of children and youth. We have said we acknowledge children and youth are an integral part of our faith community. Making space for our children and youth to share their gifts in worship, work, and the fellowship of our faith community in their own unique ways. Nurturing our children and youth in faith through Christian love and modeling of each adult. Willingly guiding and or participating in faith formation activities for our children and youth. Celebrating the presence of our children and youth among us and opening ourselves to being stretched by them. We acknowledge that faith formation is not just for children and youth. Our faith is shaped and reshaped through all ages and stages of life. So we will consider the needs of older members also. Therefore, we will prioritize participating in worship and faith formation opportunities 
learning from each other, relating to older members also. Looking first at children, I believe we're off to a good start. Many of us know and greet our children by name. Should we involve them more in worship? We have the weekly children's story and a vigorous Sunday school program, a youth program. Is that enough? Are we tempted sometimes to believe that caring for children is solely the job of parents, pastors, and teachers? We have stated above our common commitment to make space for our children and youth to share their gifts in worship, work, and the fellowship of our faith community in their own unique ways. I invite you to ask yourselves, how can I encourage our children to see it? Let me see what I ask. How can I encourage and bless them? Being able to call them by name is a good start. We say we will willingly guide and or participate in faith formation activities for our children and youth. How do we do this? Do our children see us coming to worship and Sunday school with our frequent and regular participation? I was helped to consider several stories in scripture which remind us of the high value and importance of our youngsters and the least of these. Persons who were down and out scripturally, like take Hagar, Sarah's servant, probably her slave, with whom her husband Abraham had a child because he didn't trust that God would give her one. Or Rahab the prostitute who protected the Israelite spies as they came looking over the promised land. How it was that they were staying at the prostitute's house is another issue. All the children promised are pr or protected in the scriptures from Sarah's amazing pregnancy in her old age to Moses' mother who did what must have been excruciatingly difficult by placing baby Moses in a waterproof basket and setting it afloat on the Nile. Hannah, who had another special birth, pr promising God that her son Samuel would serve God. Or Naomi and Ruth, Ruth a Moabite woman who insists on staying with her Israelite mother-in-law as she goes back to Israel after the death of both their husbands, which was a dire situation. There was no social security. And if you had no children, you had a very difficult time making it as a widow. And she, the, those beautiful words that Ruth said, to Naomi, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. And Ruth the foreigner became the, one of the matriarchs of Israel ancestor of David and of Jesus. Naaman is another interesting story. Here was a Syrian army leader and war hero, highly regarded in his family, in his country and his family, I'm sure. But he had leprosy. He also had a Hebrew slave girl, most likely taken captive in war, who said to her mistress that there was a prophet in Israel who could heal her master. Long story short, Naaman comes to the home of the prophet Elisha, who sends a messenger to him, saying, go and dip in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman is angry that Elisha doesn't even come out himself to greet him, and that he wants Naaman to go dip in the muddy Jordan. 
Don't we have better rivers in Syria? But his servants prevail on him to just go and do it. He finally does and is healed. Recall Elizabeth and Zechariah, parents in their older years of John, John the Baptist. And remember Mary, a teenage Israelite maiden, maybe 15 years old, who receives a startling messenger with a bewildering message. You will bear a baby boy and name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. All these were ordinary people used by God. Or also Jesus' attitude toward the children around him. His disciples wanted to shoo them off, as we heard. But Jesus said, let the children come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We say we will celebrate the presence of our children and youth among us and open ourselves to being stretched by them. Might we ask youth their opinions about politics and religion and current issues? We might be surprised by how aware and perceptive our young people are and how much they might value being asked. We might be concerned, well, what if they ask me something back? I believe that to be able to honestly say, I don't know. Well, let me think about that. Or, I just don't know right now, can be a helpful response. I grew up thinking that grown-ups knew most everything, and certainly that ministers did. <laughs> it was important to me while at seminary to come to a sense that you don't have to know everything to be a pastor. I think there's much we won't know this side of heaven. I think with the psalmist, when I consider your heavens, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is humanity that you care for us? Thinking about space, distance, galaxies, and time makes my eyes spin independently in my head. Could there be more than a trillion galaxies, billions of light years away? How about matter? Do we really see only 3% of what is? How great God is. So, we acknowledge that faith formation is not just for children and youth. Our faith is shaped and reshaped through all ages and stages of life. And that includes older persons too. I have the privilege, at least most of the time it's a privilege, of working with our, some of our seniors at Bethesda Home in Gossel. They have questions too, and insecurities. Most of them have been believers all their lives, but they sometimes wonder, will I make it to heaven? We hear the good news and proclaim it again and again. We need to. Which also argues for the importance of regularly participating in Sunday morning events. The early church met together daily, praising God and breaking bread. Today, our Sunday Sabbath often competes with sports and other events demanding attention. Do we hear enough of the great news of God's redeeming love? Back to our seniors, I often hear persons at Bethesda say they would like to attend church. Often they need rides. One woman goes with her daughter to her daughter's church. She says she knows her daughter would take her to her own church if she just asked but she doesn't want to be a bother to her. During a time in life when seniors are facing their mortality and seeing the end of this life coming closer, how important is it that they receive the nurture of the church? 
Is there someone in your circle who would respond to an offer to take them along to church? All this to say that we value all ages here at Lorraine Avenue Mennonite Church. We value life from little children who toddle about and play and sometimes streak down the main aisle to tweens and teens discovering life with their changing minds and bodies and experiences, tempted to spend all of their time on digital media, to adults in their learning and yearning, their learning and earning years with responsibilities to support themselves and their families, to our gay, lesbian, and trans persons living their lives in an often judgmental society to our seniors with their accumulated, accumulated wisdom and sometimes their not mature behaviors. <laughs> we declare God's love and affection for us all. Let's love one another the way God loves us, without condition and without reservation. Isn't that the good news? For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is our God. This is our faith. This is our community. And this is our joy. May it so be. Amen. seated. Good morning. This is the time of our service where we consider the work of the church. We welcome each one of you. So we'll sing the chorus and verse one, I believe it's written, and then the chorus again, and then we'll tack on the last phrase one more time, and it'll just feel natural. Don't worry about it.
Receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, Lord turn his face toward you and give you joy and peace. Amen. <laughs>